So you've seen me in Andrew Larson's shop in a video we released, I don't know, maybe a month ago? Because Andrew's a guy that's gonna make my form setter hammers. You know, five pounder, three pounder. And I had a great time and I learned a lot from Andrew about hammer making and various production blacksmithing techniques. But part of the bonus of that trip was Andrew invited a friend, Jonathan Pinkston. And Jonathan and his dad showed up and man, I just had a great time with those two young guys continuing to download on an old man some things that I hadn't seen before, something that I had never imagined before, and refreshing something that I had learned about before but now know a way to apply really some mid-level mathematics to solving an entry-level blacksmithing problem in a way that was new to me and is gonna be so handy. So the first thing I learned was a way to apply the simplest of tools to solve a problem that we have all the time, and it's this. How do I cut a little piece of bar stock without walking over to my cutoff saw or my band saw or my cutting torch? What's the slickest way to cut a piece of bar stock without building a fire and using a hot cut? Turns out it's a crescent wrench and a vise. I'll show you that. The second thing is, why is collaring my, my architectural ironwork such a pain? And how did the old timers do it? Because it's hard to make a collar tight and even and regular and secure. Turns out the answer to that is a collaring anvil. And the third thing was, how do I use the Fibonacci sequence, which I have known is um, something that can be used to understand a lot of the beauty in nature. How can I use that to make my blacksmithing more beautiful? And this young guy, Jonathan Pinkston, had answers to all three of those questions. Jonathan is another very interesting young pup. Okay, he's 21 years old. And for those of you who are between the ages of 15 and 25, that just seems like kind of a normal age, right? Well, let me tell you, it is young. When you're 21, you are young enough to do anything and almost old enough to do anything, and it's part of a golden, a golden age. <clears throat> this young guy just came to the end of his term as the Kentucky State FFA president. Now, those of you who live in the city don't realize what a big deal FFA is in agricultural states like Kentucky. I've known one other state FFA president, and he was just as sharp as a knife, and so is, so is Jonathan. So not only that, but Jonathan is presently enrolled in college, and he's going to get a teaching credential because this young man wants to be a shop teacher. And I'm not going out on a limb when I tell you when he becomes a shop teacher, he's going to be one of the very, very best. One important, one thing I want to make right is that it's relatively even, so I can do a little bit of adjustment here. So it's a square break. That's right. Because when you forge that end of the material out, you don't want it to veer off one side or the other. Instead, mm -hmm. it'll be that nice round mm -hmm. in the center. Then I'm just taking a crescent wrench. Is, is that a 15 inch? Let's look at the handle on that. I think that's a 15 inch crescent, isn't it? Yeah, right there. Yep, all right. And then I'm going to line up the side of my wrench with the side of the jaw, which means my crescent wrench is gonna be kicked out a little bit because those are gonna be tapered. Yep. And I'll rotate back. I'll feel the break, and once it breaks, I can rotate the Look other Look at way. that, ladies and gentlemen. Show, show us the end of that. Plenty good. And you can see sure. it rip, it's ripping on the sides, yep. and it's twisting and shearing off in the middle. After Jonathan had described to me you know, how he used the Fibonacci sequence to get the golden spiral, to get the size and the proportion and the curves to make the jigs, to bend the C-scrolls to put into this trivet, he got out his, an his collaring anvil which I think Andrew had made. I don't know, maybe Jonathan made it. But Andrew does make them, and I'm gonna include a link in the notes so that you can get a hold of Andrew and see if he makes anything else that you need in your shop. And I can just about guarantee that you do. But the collaring anvil is very similar to this bending jig that I made for my fly press. Andy Doner had one of these in his shop, and I thought, well, what a brilliant way to be able to get different radiuses bent under your fly press. Collaring anvil, same thing. Because how else, let's put this up so you can see it. How else are you gonna make collars this perfect? And how else except with really nicely crafted jigs are you gonna get C-scrolls that are identical? So that the equilateral triangles are visually perfect. 
so that the spacing and the curves all come together at the right point to be encompassed by the right radius. It takes care, it takes attention to detail, and it takes, my friends, a collaring anvil or something like it to be able to clinch these collars down tight enough to hold the work. And then you can see it's attached on the sides there. We've got a gap on the bottom to set our corners into release. We'll hit it once. It spreads right. the top, sets the bottom corners. Nice. Now we'll feel here, raise up. We don't want to damage our tools. Look at that. Bisect the angle again. Wow. Now he's here. As Jonathan was describing to me how he arrived at the lengths to cut out of a 10 foot piece of uh, bar stock in order to get the 24 inch diameter trivet, he immediately began to talk about the golden mean, the golden proportion and the Fibonacci sequence as a way to arrive at those ideal appearances. So I created a, a jig off of the Fibonacci numbers, um, taking it at one inch, so one inch by one inch, two inches, three inches, and so on, and then I made that jig. And then off of that jig, I then made another jig, hot scrolled it onto this piece, onto, onto the yes, fixture to make the standard made. scrolling jig off of those numbers. Mm -hmm. But the important thing to consider is that's no longer the golden ratio, or that's no longer the Fibonacci, Fibonacci scroll. number. It's getting closer to the golden ratio. Well, what I've done, it's not quite getting closer to the golden ratio. Imagine if you've got a, C, a, a, a ratio and you multiply it by, multiply it by two. Mm -hmm. Same ratio, right? Mm -hmm. What if you add two to both sides? Different ratio. It's a different ratio. Yeah. And that's what you're doing with a piece of quarter inch flat bar, is you're adding a quarter of an inch. Oh. So you're changing the ratio. Oh, you're adding the thickness of the material that's around right. the outside of your jig, right? That's right. And so you do that with the Fibonacci scroll. Then you add the thickness of the jig, making one hot scroll. You take that fixture, make another jig. You do it one more time. And that last one will make a C scroll that touches. And that's called a logarithmic spiral. Mm. So it's You're killing me. This is awesome. <laughs> now, before I sort of offend those of you who don't like math, let me just tell you that a sequence is something as simple as one, two, three, four, five, six. That's adding one to the previous number. Or two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, that's adding two to the previous number. Or ten, twenty, thirty, forty, you get the point. A sequence is just a logical and reasonable and consistent progression of numbers or values. Well, the Fibonacci sequence is unique in that it starts with zero and then adds one. Zero plus one is one. One plus one is two. And so you begin taking the two previous numbers and adding them together to get the number you're interested in. It goes one, one, two. 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 plus 3 is 8, 8 plus 5 is 13, and clear the end of time or until you lose interest, whichever happens first. Let me show you how he drew this out on that concrete floor and explain to me how he used the golden sequence, the golden proportion, Fibonacci sequence, to arrive at something that is very close to the golden spiral. I didn't have graph paper, so I had to do my own measuring to create squares. One inch square, another one inch square, and then a square that is two on each side because one plus one is two, and then a square that is three on each side because one plus two is three. Now let me jump over to the plywood model that I'm gonna keep in my shop as long as I'm blacksmithing. One and one is two. One and two is three. Two and three is five. Three and five is eight. Five and eight is 13. It begins to get big and up to 21. 
Now the further you go, the ratio between the two numbers gets closer and closer and closer. Ratio means relationship, means dividing one into the other. Don't worry about that. And by the way, if you're intimidated by math, it's time for you to level up, because math is power. But if you just draw this shape, and then take a compass and draw quarter circles, put the compass right here and draw a quarter circle, put the compass right here and a quarter circle, 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 as far as you want. you get something that is very close to the golden spiral. Now it's not a perfect golden spiral. It's closer to a logarithmic spiral, they tell me. It doesn't matter. This is a solution to a lot of scrolling problems and as a blacksmith. So I had a fine trip to Kentucky. I followed it up with a trip up to Wisconsin to see Bob Bergman. You're gonna be seeing what I learned from Bob. But as I boil this down and as we back out of this video, because you've got other things to do, I want to tell you what I think are four of the biggest takeaways for young men, frankly for men of any age, that I got on this trip. First is the life-changing power of continuing to be curious and diving in. There are four young guys, Andrew, Jonathan, and two friends, Mark and Ethan, that are scattered out from Canada to Texas and back to Kentucky who have crossed paths through the blacksmithing craft. And all four, one of the things besides blacksmithing that they all four shared was intense curiosity and a willingness to dive in and learn something new. That's life changing. Even if you're never gonna be a blacksmith, that characteristic of being and remaining curious and having the courage to dive in is gonna take you far. The next thing, is the life-changing power of education, continuing education, and specifically math. Math is power. Math will open doors that you don't even know exist right now. And the absence of math will guarantee that a lot of those doors are gonna remain shut. Now you don't have to go to the extreme zenith of higher mathematics, but accumulate some math at whatever level you can and find out how to apply it to the problems in your world. It's going to change you and it's going to change your opportunities. The next item is the life-changing power of the friends that you accumulate or rid yourself of. There is almost nothing that will change your stars like your friends. In fact, it's very true that show me the five people you hang around with the most and I will know you before we meet because your friends have a profound impact for good or for ill. So don't waste time with friends who won't elevate you and move you forward. And the last thing was something that I've known since I was a pup, but was illustrated again by these pups, and it's this. The life-changing power of hard work is the key to fulfillment. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Don't be afraid to dive in and go to work and make something happen. Thanks for watching Essential Craftsman, and keep up the good work.